Hey guys, today I want to answer a question about event photography, specifically what lenses should you use as an event photographer. This comes from Sasha. She says, as a part-time fine arts documentary photographer, I use smaller Fuji X series cameras. I use prime lenses. My wife has secured me as her company's event award ceremony photographer poor lighting, variable focal length needs, etc. So Sasha has the 18 to 55 right now and it's not adequate. And Sasha's wondering for low lighting, which will always be a concern, one, should Sasha buy a 16 to 55 f2.8 or um, use the 18 to 55 and upgrade from the X-T1 to the X-T3? Good question. I can't answer that for you, unfortunately. This is always my answer, by the way. Um, I can only tell you what I do, so let me do that. So Sasha, like you, I thought I needed a zoom lens and I thought that the 16 to 55 f2.8 uh, would do an adequate job in low light. Also, the 50 to 140 2.8. I thought these two lenses would get me there. and. I mean, it can work, right? They do all right in low light, depending on how low of light, but you'll get more no noisy photos, and I just didn't like delivering noisy photos for clients. I also am not a huge fan of bounce flash, personally. I prefer not to use flash, and at a lot of the events that I'm at, I can't anyway, they discourage it. Um, and that's fine, because like you, I'm a prime person. So I don't use these at events anymore, unless it's outside. If it's outside, sure, all day. These are awesome, they're great. But for indoors, let me show you what I do use. When I shoot events now, I only take three things. I do have backups in the car. It's important to have backups. You never really know if something's gonna go wrong. But on my person, this is all I have. I have the 16 millimeter 1.4, the 56 millimeter 1.2, and my X-T3, and that's all I need. But you brought up the need for variable focal length, and that's a valid concern. And for a while, I, I had the X-T2 mounted with this guy, and the X-T3 mounted with this. Um, but I just got frustrated with that, switching cameras. I know a lot of wedding photographers do that, and that works great for them. But I found that I was just as fast just doing this. That was just as fast for me. I don't find that I save all that much time dropping a camera and bringing the other ones up. Maybe a little bit, if I'm honest, but if I'm anticipating what's happening and what's, what's happening in front of me, I'd rather have the same body with me and just, you know, do that. That's all the speed you need, really. Um, and I don't miss shots. Now at this point, I know that there are lots and lots of people out there absolutely horrified that I would drop a lens in a bag and leave the back element exposed in such a horrific way. Um, yeah, I mean, it's not ideal, right? I don't, when I'm at home or when I'm in a more casual setting or when I can take my time, I absolutely cover my lenses. But uh, at an event, I don't. I will drop them in my bag. I'll leave the front and back elements exposed. And I know that that's a little bit of a risk. However, modern lenses are pretty tough, guys. You don't have to baby them like the old timers used to have to with older lenses. These things are they're pretty good. Um, and these, these have lasted me, you know, years with no perceptible um, image quality reduction even when I even when I drop them on my bag like that and leave the elements exposed. So for me, I think it's okay. Um, and it's, it's, it's my job, right? I'm getting paid to not miss shots and I'm not gonna miss them. And this gives me the best possible image quality that I can get out of Fuji gear in low light setting. But that's just me. Um, if, if that makes you uncomfortable, by all means, do not shoot this way. So why these two lenses? Well, the 56.12, first off, is a no-brainer. There really is no better lens in the Fuji lens lineup for low light gathering. It's the lowest aperture lens available. Not only that, it's just a great lens. It's beautiful. It focuses really fast on the X-T3, um, even in low light, which in the past it hasn't always been known for how well it does, but with, with this combination, I, I don't miss shots when I'm auto-focusing. And uh, beyond that, it has just a really beautiful background blurring, I guess, if you're into that. Um, it's really good. I, I tried the 90 F2, by the way, for a while, but it just wasn't quite there with the low light. I wanted the absolute best light gathering 
portrait lens I could get, and that's this. As far as the 16 millimeter 1.4, um, this is just my favorite lens of all time. I really love it, and I love uh, details with this this lens. Getting detail shots at events, this is great. The close focus ability is excellent, and the way it just, I mean, I can't really explain it, but it, it does the job really well for details. And then just wide shots in general. I like how it looks. It's a bit wide, I'm not gonna lie. Some people don't like that 24 millimeter equivalent field of view when they're after group shots, for instance. 35 millimeter is a little bit more moderate. Doesn't distort things quite so much, but I like the extremeness of this lens. For me, it works with my style very well. Now occasionally it might be nice to have something in between, something around a 50 millimeter equivalent focal length would be nice. And, and so I did bring my little 35 f2 for a while. I can tuck that away anywhere in this bag because it's just a teeny little lens and, and I always had it with me. But guess what? I never took it out. Never. And so I just don't anymore. I only use these two lenses. But again, that's just me. But that does require you I have this with me. This is a sling bag. This is the Hazard 4 Plan B, I think. I don't remember. I'll put it on the screen. Um, and when I, when I know I'm going to be switching lenses back and forth, I kind of always have it kind of tucked back here um, and zipped most of the way up. But when I need it, you know, I just... And it's all right in front of me and I can get to it fast. A lot of times I just have this right in front of me and that's fine too because it gives you stabilization. You look a little bit like a goober, but no one's paying attention to you. You're the photographer, you're blending into the background anyway. So this setup works really well for me. Um, am I saying it's what you should do or what other event photographers should do? Um, not necessarily, but if it gives you ideas and if it saves you money, then maybe you should look into it. I'd encourage you to practice swapping lenses and maybe even shoot with the 16 to 8 or the 16 to 55 to 8 in low light and see what kind of results you get. See if that works for you. Rent it for one of your events. Try that and then try these. Anyway, that's my best advice for you. I hope that it helped. In the meantime, kindness before cameras. Talk to you guys again really soon.